Today we're going to be looking at a very silly video by Eclectic. This is one trillion lions versus the sun. Who would win and solve with science? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, some crazy scenarios like this do come up in nuclear engineering related topics. Let's get right into this. In early 2015, a parody of the Who Would Win image macro circled the internet, oh my. one trillion lines against the sun. Many responses came, none of them serious. Eventually though, a few people began to apply- I like the one that said the lines will win if they attacked at night. The answer is the sun, by the question. way. I've read over these answers, and I feel that there are a few things that can still be expanded upon, all while diving into how we talk about large numbers, unanswered physics thought experiments, and obliterating our solar system through piles of animals. So, wow. who would win? One trillion lions, or the sun? It's going to be the sun, unless they're referring to a lion as some other construct that isn't this animal we're all familiar with. We're referring to the sun as not the star that we are all orbiting right now. Let's find out. First, we need to assess our competitors. In the right <laughs> corner, we have the sun. The sun is a miasma. I like the smiley plasma. face. It's not on fire. The sheer amount of heat and energy from the sun can strip electrons from the nuclei of atoms, creating a soup of fast-moving, high-energy plasma particles. It's a big nuclear fusion reactor. Well, as a nuclear engineer, I figured my money's got to go on the fusion reactor. Then can collide with each other to create heavier elements and release even yep. more energy, creating a massive self-sustaining fusion bomb that constantly spews out high-energy electromagnetic radiation. Like it's not a bomb in terms of of energy release, it's way, way higher than any sort of bomb, mainly because it's sustainable. It's a bomb that has lasted billions of years and will continue to last more than billions of years. It's, it's a reactor, not a bomb. It actually gives us life, though it can take it away with prolonged exposure and inadequate protection from the sun, but that's true with anything. Water can give you life and it can also kill you. Light UV, X-rays, and gamma rays. <laughs> And then there are the lines. That's true. A lot of forms of radiation, not just the, not just what you say. They eat antelopes and stuff. Hey, I never said this would be a fair fight, <laughs> but the lions have a numerical advantage, right? Ian Stead, the new statesman, counted not really. one trillion lions would weigh one point eight seven five times ten to the fourteenth kilograms. That's nothing. Two hundred ninety cubic kilometers in volume and have a diameter of eight kilometers. A sphere of lions? A tr that's actually kind of terrifying. What is this? An animal planet? That means that this lion sphere is about twice as wide as Central Park and nowhere near as pretty. The sun, on the other hand, is 51 kilometers across and... Wait, no. hold on. No. Ha, seems I'm using a non-credible source. Hold on. Okay, much better. The sun is about 1.4 okay. million kilometers across and has a mass of about 2 times 10 to the 30th kilometers, there you go. which is 10 quadrillion times as massive as the lion ball. At this point, it seems obvious who's going to win. <laughs> The ball of lines being plunked into space won't have I any sort of momentum relative to the sun, so it'll slowly begin to fall towards it. Since it won't be hindered by any type of air resistance, by the time that the ball reaches the corona, the outermost layer of the sun, it'll be traveling at over 400 kilometers per second. Then the ball will plummet through a thin but very hot soup of radiation and particles. Small corona? bits of line will sloth off in a process called sputtering as it smashes through thicker and thicker atmosphere, through the corona and the chromosphere, until it hits about the photosphere. There's not too much data about chucking things into the sun, but as the particle density increases, the sphere of lions should slowly break up and become balls of plasma that integrate into the sun like nothing. I mean, it'll basically be like a shooting star on the sun. Uh, the lions will be long dead, I mean, just going through space and everything, unless you put them all in spacesuits and... But the heat, the question isn't, you know, the lions will survive, it's, you know, how long will they last on their journey towards the sun? If we want to destroy the sun, we're going to need more lions. <laughs> First, we can really? bend the rules a bit. Remember that whole one trillion thing? Well, it turns out that a trillion means different things to different people. In English-speaking countries, oh, the long scale. By the is he going that way? One thousand thousands is a million. A thousand millions is a billion, etc. This is called the short scale. I did not think he would go this direction. It's still not going to change anything. In English-speaking countries, however, they count by the millions. A million is a thousand thousands, the same as in the short scale, but a thousand millions is a milliard. Milliard. A billion to them is a million millions. This is the long scale, and a long scale trillion, then, is equivalent to a million million millions, or a short scale quintillion. That's a lot larger than before. Use scientific notation, but please. <laughs> that's only a mass of 1.88 times 10 to the 20th kilograms, still way less 10 than orders the of magnitude. Sun, though now we have left. a ball that's about 821 kilometers across, about half the size of the moon. Still not big enough to beat the sun, but at least now we that's can start talking about something just interesting. Just a terrifying concept, the, the ball of the sun, lions. They'll be so utterly destroyed that we can stop thinking of them as hair and claws and internal organs, and instead think of them as collections of elements. To my knowledge, nobody's run a lion <laughs> through an ICPMS before. 
but if you have... Okay, I, I love this. I did not think we would get to this point. Mass spectrometers, wow. Something used to separate out, out elements and also various enrichment levels for when you are enriching uranium from natural uranium being mostly 238 to a higher concentration of uranium 235, whether it be for uh, nuclear power plants or for nuclear weapons. Touch. Nevertheless, we can approximate their elemental composition with another mammal. We have data on humans, which, for our purposes, might as well be smaller, less hairy lions, so let's just use that. By weight, these lions would be 65% oxygen, 18% carbon, 10% hydrogen, 3% nitrogen, 1.5% calcium, and 1% phosphorus, with fractions of a percent in potassium, sulfur, sodium, and chlorine, and trace this amounts is of minerals awesome. like iron, copper, and magnesium. That means that our lion ball has similar composition to a comet, which we know partly lion because comet. we literally smashed into one in 2005 during the Deep Impact mission. When this comet falls into... <laughs> The deep impact like it's a hit was a historical event. Okay. <laughs> Underrated movie though. It may be able to cause a solar flare, but more than likely it'll just burn. I actually thought deep impact was more realistic than Armageddon. I ain't saying much, but still. And the component elements will integrate with the rest of the sun just as before. Even worse, the sun could use these elements for fusion, giving it more fuel and making it shine for even longer. <laughs> Can these poor lions ever win? One potential method could be to compress these- I guess it technically could use for fusion, but again, it's not going to make an appreciable difference. I mean, the little bit of hydrogen, because like most life forms being mostly water going in there, but it's- I mean, this is a big, disgusting chunk of lion animal planet here, but it's nothing compared to the sun. I mean, it might do something to, say, the moon, but no. ...and into a black hole. If we want our one trillion lions to become a black hole, we would need to compress them down to their Schwarzschild radius. The Schwarzschild <laughs> radius is a property of anything with mass, basically giving a lower limit for how small something can be crushed before I it's mean, so dense that light sure. would be unable to escape from it. For our how are you going to do this, though? <laughs> ...lions, the radius is 0 .00279 angstroms. Yeah. So angstrom, so we're getting into we're getting into atomic and subatomic lengths, though that's still a lot bigger than an atomic nucleus. An oxygen molecule that you just inhaled is forty three thousand times <laughs> longer than the lion black hole is wide. I have neither yeah. the knowledge, the credentials, nor the computational power to work out whether or not this lion micro black hole would even be detectable, let alone be able to engulf the sun. It doesn't have the mass. I'll leave this point as an exercise for the viewer. The thing is though, ten to the twentieth kilograms is super, super small for a black hole. And I can't do this in my head, but would it even have an appreciable impact on the lifetime of the sun? The remaining lifetime of the sun being 5 billion years before it turns into a red giant. The sun without having to rely on a quark of physics? Here's what I posit. A thought experiment, if you will. Can there ever be an amount of lions that can start nuclear fusion on their own? The logic here being that if there are conditions for which lions can become a star, uh -huh. then maybe it's impossible for okay. lions to ever be able to put out the sun. Otherwise, you could just take an arbitrarily large pool of lions and throw it into the sun to extinguish it. If the arbitrarily large... Nuclear fusion with lions. Um, so nuclear fusion is you need heat, usually on the order of millions of degrees Celsius. The sun, we're talking about 15 million degrees Celsius, but a fusion reactor on Earth, you're going to need hundreds of millions because we don't have the type of gravity on the sun. A lot of pressure and confinement time. The sun gets that with its gravity, and on Earth, you use either magnetic fields or inertial confinement with lasers in order to hold everything together, for lack of a better word, for long enough for the fusion reaction to achieve ignition, which is when it becomes self-sustaining. Now, using that with something with lions, which include a bunch of large elements that aren't fusion friendly, let's just say you'd be better off using some sort of really big directed energy weapon at the sun while that would be horribly inefficient, trying to induce fusion with things that just don't want to fuse is going to be even more energy cost prohibitive. ...of lions can trigger nuclear fusion in its own core before it gets so large that it collapses into a black hole, then maybe there will never be a way for lions <laughs> to stop nuclear fusion. In order to get the lion ball to begin fusing, it needs to reach a temperature of 100 million Kelvin. In stars, this temperature comes from the collapse of large clouds of... So 100 million Kelvin, which is about 100 million Celsius, if your temperature is that low, you're going to need insane amounts of pressure that are going to be way higher than anything you could possibly get on Earth. ...and gas, which can then sustain the process of nuclear fusion. In piles of lions, the only force that we would get would be the lions pressing against each other, which would lead to reasonably high temperatures and pressures, but it's lacking that oomph no. that we need to bring it to 100 million <laughs> Some Kelvin. super strong well, lions. Since lions shouldn't be able to spontaneously undergo nuclear fusion, how big of a lion ball can we get before it becomes a black hole by size and mass alone? 
By comparing the change in the sword shield radius to the change in the actual radius of a glowing sphere of lions, we can see that a pile hilarious. of lions spontaneously become a black hole when it reaches a radius of 5.01 times 10 to the 11th meters. This would require 1.8 times 10 to the 36th lions and have a mass of 3.4 times 10 to the 38th kilograms. Well, that's a lot bigger than the sun. Now we're talking. If we threw together three times ten Make to the thirty bigger than the sun. Of lions, going a couple orders of magnitude below that. Up if you had this much, the lions could just step on the sun and snuff it out. Theoretically, if it's that big, because that would make it a hundred thousand times bigger than the sun. We might now be able to snuff out the sun. As this lion ball pops into existence, a lot more than the whole a trillion. system shifts its orbits. The sun begins to stretch as it falls toward the enormous planet of lions. This stretching and subsequent collision pulls the gases yeah, the away from each other, decreasing the temperature and the number of plasma particle collisions. Eventually, the fusion will cease, and the gases will permeate into the lion sphere, and the entire solar system will be destroyed. And for what? Why create this cruel, cruel challenge? Surely lions were never meant to snuff out our only source of life in this cold, unforgiving universe. And as our green earth continues its descent into its liony grave, I hope that the person who created this challenge is able to realize the magnitude of the problems that they have created. That is ridiculous, and I love it. I did not expect this to go into black holes and lion fusion. That was amazing. Though I did just think of one idea. I remember in The Lion King how... Mufasa said the stars were all the remnants of like old lions or something to that effect. I don't remember the exact quote, but basically be the sun versus a trillion other stars. I mean, it's trillion to one odds right there. And most stars are more massive than the sun anywhere. So there you have it. The former kings, former lion kings. That was so silly. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.